first we're going to start with the immortal game between Gary Kimovich Kasparov, the 13th world chess champion, arguably, I mean, not even arguably, he is considered the greatest player of all time. Now, by by the end of his career, I think Magnus will probably surpass Gary. But as of this as of this present moment, I think most people still do consider Gary to be the greatest player of all time. Now, why is this called Immortal? Because this is, I think Gary himself said, the greatest game that he ever played. All right, so the game goes to E4. Veselin Topolov in 1999 against Gary. He plays D6, a little bit unorthodox. Normally, most people know Veselin would play uh, would play C5 and play the Sicilian defense. He plays um, he, he anyway. He plays the uh, modern or the Pyrrhic defense. D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6, Bishop E3, Bishop G7, Queen D2 here. So Gary plays sort of not the sharpest approach. Uh, most 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 players these days will play something sharper like Bishop G5 and F4, maybe F4 and Knight F3 right now. So there are a lot of a lot of ways of playing it, but Gary plays a very traditional, very solid way. So c6 is played, f3, b5. Again, f3 supports the pawn. It also stops black from being able to play knight g4. So, for example, if you were to say play a move like e4, black might have a move like knight g4. Very pesky move. Hits the bishop, puts pressure on the center here. Um, and, of course, it's also a right triangle, obviously. So Gary plays f3 here. Yeah, very it's sort of, it's, it's, it's a move Naval that serves has dual functionality. $50. I love your streams. Wish you more success in the new year. Thank you to Naval Chopra for the 50 bucks. Thank you to Durfner for the Primus Solus Aurelius for the three months. So, so F3 is dual purpose. It supports the center. You create a connect three, but it also prevents black from, from attacking its bishop, which is a really nice bishop here. A lot of scope long term. So F3 is a very thematic, very nice move. So B5 is played here. Gary plays knight e2, knight bd7, bishop h6. Trying to exchange this bishop off the board. Veselin takes and plays bishop to b7. So one thing that you learn when you play these setups with the Fianchetto and you put the bishop sort of in what we call the sniper's nest here with these pawns around it is that you don't want to trade the bishop. So when you trade the bishop, um, it becomes very hard to castle here and your king becomes very weak. So for example, let's say black were to castle here. White can now play h4 and go all in for a quick attack on the king side. And it's very, very dangerous here. And as, you, as you'll see from the evaluation, Black is already much, much worse. So in this case, Veselin trades, and he realizes that since he's not going to be castling the king to the king's side, he's going to move the queen and try to castle to the queen's side. So now Gary plays a3, a move to stop this b4 move, which would potentially undermine this knight on b4, and you'd have to move it and lose time. So now Veselin plays e5. Gary castles. Veselin goes queen e7. Again, he develops the queen so he can castle to the queen side. King b1, a6. Uh, knight c1 and now Veselin castles. Now the reason Veselin played a6 to be clear was because after castles maybe white can play a move like d5 here and your your queenside pawns become very very brittle here. Uh, potentially this pawn chain is very weak. It's a little bit dicey because of what's going to happen when white moves the knight so that's why Veselin plays a6 first. Knight c1 castles because now if you go d5 black can either take or even just go c5 and the pawns are very stable and, and the pawn on b5 is supported. Okay, so castles, Gary goes knight b3, logical move. First of all, you, if black takes, you can take with the knight. Secondly, you maybe have ideas with knight a5 to hit the bishop on b7. So now e takes d4 is played. Gary goes rook d4. This is very good for white, by the way, to be clear. Um, uh, so now c5 is played. Gary plays rook d1. Veselin plays knight b6. Now, one thing that's noticeable here is that black wants to open up the center. If you look at this position... This rook can come into the center of the board very easily. Um, but the white right now, he has a really nice connect three. But the problem is this bishop and this rook, they're sort of not in the game. And you can't develop the bishop because if you go here, there's c4, forking the knight and the bishop. And if you go bishop e2, black and play d5. And after pawn takes pawn, um, I don't know which knight is best, but let's just say this one takes bishop d5. You'll notice that, again, white is lacking, in, lacking sort of in development. You can play rook e1 here, but after bishop b3, rook d8 rook d8 takes i mean something like i don't know rook e8 even and black is doing very very well here the knight is good the queen and the rook are good and white is really suffering and struggling so for that reason it looks like veselin has had a very successful opening and so here gary actually and this i think is a sign of how how you see the game progress you see the computers here they say like queen h4 is the best move or queen e3 um Gary plays this move g3, which is actually not probably a great move objectively, but it ends up turning out very nicely for him. And this is kind of what you'll see when you look at games as you go back. Now, in this case, it's not a serious mistake, but if you go further back in time, you'll notice that over time, um, the quality when you use computers to analyze games, it get, it's not it's not what you would it's not as as great as it is today. Um, 
So g3, Veslin goes king b8, knight a5 here by, by Gary. Again, you'll see when you look at when you look at this game, like you're seeing the moves Gary plays are not objectively the best. And that's not to say that Gary is not a great player. Obviously, he was the best player um uh for his time period by 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 a very large margin, but you'll notice that the progression and the quality gets better and better um as as we go forward over time. So now Veselin plays bishop a8, a, kind of a questionable move here. Again, I think d5 was necessary, but Veselin understandably was con concerned about something like queen f4 check, hitting the king in the knight. The king moves to like a7, and maybe white can play something like bishop b5, pawn takes, and knight b5. And I mean, I guess this is just a draw. But again, it's very easy to get concerned with these two horses jumping all around your king and getting up all up in your business. Um, and so it's very understandable. Also, like you can't block because then you blunder the knight. And as as I as I think I pointed out, this is a classic double attack, as those of you who are watching, I think Poke Mainstream the other day would have seen when she was doing puzzles. Alright, um so for that reason, Veslin does not play d5. He decides to go bishop to a8 here. And now Gary plays bishop to h3, trying to develop the bishop on a diagonal where it's kind of putting some pressure on the light squares. Secondly, you can also play rook to rook to e1 here and um, your rooks get developed very very quickly so now Veselin plays d5 so gary goes queen f4 king to a7 and now rook h1 and here gary not gary sorry here Veselin plays pawn to d4 and so this is sort of the beginning of where the game begins to get really wild and this is why when you look at someone like gary kasparov and this game in particular you go wow because when you see the computer evaluation, you see how it's saying black is better. Now, mind you, I don't have endless depth here, so the evaluation can change, but it's not really clear cut. Like, what is what is the best way for white to play this play this position? Um, is it knight a2? Is it knight d5? You, you have a lot of options, but they all don't look look really very pleasant here. So Gary goes knight d5, Veselin takes, and goes queen d6. And now look at this evaluation, guys. Look, look at this evaluation. You see how the computer even, the computer even is not seeing the move here. And this speaks volumes to how incredibly strong Gary Kasparov was and how good his intuition was. Because obviously, in this position, you can't figure out like what the what the how, how you proceed here. Or at least it's, it's very unclear um, what the best move is. And the computer even you see it's saying knight c6 is the best move. And after knight c6, bishop c6, white should take and take on c6. And uh, I guess after king b6 black should be a little bit better here um, computer I see is giving a big advantage So we're not machine slow down. I'm not I'm not going super fast you guys um, So we reach this position and Maybe human analysis is wrong. Of course human analysis is wrong <laughs> computers are better than humans But but anyway, um, but in this case you'll see that Gary at this point in time he decides to go for it. He, he sort of, it's a combination of calculation and intuition. And he plays a brilliant concept here. He plays, um, he plays Rook takes pawn. And so now you'll see, look at this computer evaluation. You guys look at this computer doesn't even see this. Now I do, I, I, I haven't looked this through this game recently with a computer, so I could be wrong, but look at this evaluation. Computer says Rook takes D four and, um, and it says minus 2.7. Gary is completely insane. He's not the greatest player of all time. He just blundered a Rook. Um, so now Veslin takes, and here Gary plays rook to e7. And now you guys, you're going to start seeing, look at this bar. Look at this bar. You see, it, it's starting, it's starting to come down a little bit. It hasn't gotten all the way down, but a little bit. Um, and the reason this double rook sacrifice is so amazing is because if black takes the rook, you play queen takes pawn, hitting the king. Now the knight holds the square, so the king can't go over one. King goes back to b8, you go queen to b6 check. Now if black blocks with the queen here, you have a really beautiful move. You have knight to c6, and this is checkmate. The reason this is checkmate is that the king cannot go to either square. King cannot go here because the queen covers the square. King cannot go here because the bishop covers covers uh, covers a square on c8. You also cannot take the knight because your queen is pinned, because if you were to take, your king would be in check. So this is just checkmate. So for that reason, after rook to e7, um, Vessel and Topolov is forced to go king to b6. Now keep in mind, Gary, I think, I, I don't I don't remember exactly what he said about this game, but when he reached this position, um, he, he was intuitively trusting that this king being on the rim, there was some way to make a checkmate. He had not calculated everything to the very end. Um, and this is where, like, this is why I really do rank this as an extremely high game, because a lot of this, a lot of this game was pure intuition. Because at this moment, Gary is down one rook. He has a queen 
a knight, a bishop, and one rook. Black currently has a queen, two rooks, a bishop, and a knight. So, so black is up one whole rook. Yeah, Kubus has just donated $24.69. Hey, Happy New Year. Just started playing chess competitively and am really enjoying it. Mm. I also enjoy watching your stream. Any Thank you. Tips? Appreciate it. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, so um, so as, as I was saying, basically, he, he, had, he had to trust his intuition here. So now here he plays queen takes d4 and um Veselin takes now i think in retrospect queen c5 was actually maybe a move or it wasn't wow it's not a move because there's this crazy computer line queen takes knight of course if you take the knight here there's pawn to b4 forking the king and the queen and you lose and when you go queen to d6 here there's this beautiful move bishop to e6 wow what a move and if black goes king takes a5, I think you have pawn to b4 check. If king to b6, there's queen to d4. And you're going to get checkmated here because the king cannot go back to any of these squares. The rook holds all three. You can't go here because the pawn takes, and you can't go here, of course. And if you block, just queen c5. And it's a beautiful, beautiful checkmate. And if you go king a4, I just very quietly just go like queen to b2, I think. Or wait, no, no, sorry, queen c3. And... Um, and after, there's a reason. After bishop takes d5, you go king to b2. And the thing is, this is unreal. So right now, black is up one rook. No matter which piece black captures, let's say he captures his bishop, you can go queen to b3 check. Bishop takes queen, pawn takes, and it's checkmate. Look at this king. Just the three pawns, they hold each other, and the king gets checkmated on a4. Um, and this again is why when you get a king sort of running in the open or it's it's on the middle or it's sort of on the rim and it's coming down the board it's very very dangerous for reasons like this um, two rooks and a queen losing to three pawns exactly I mean it's just three pawns and your king gets checkmated I mean this is one of the most beautiful checkmates you'll ever see so um, so this is one line which is completely winning now of course in the, in the game who knows if Veselin saw this or if he just want to go queen c5 but at any or he just didn't want to go queen c5 because he assumed it had to be bad he takes all the material here so now you'll see black has a rook and a knight two rooks a queen a bishop and a knight and white has a queen a rook and a bishop now when you think about this game again when gary plays this line starting with rook takes d4 a lot of this position like here it's intuition because you cannot calculate everything the human brain does not function the way the computer mind does um and so you can't calculate pure variations all the way out no, he calculated, I think he calculated a large chunk of it, but I think he is, I mean, I don't know exactly what he said about this game, but I think he assumed that there had to be some checkmate after b4, king, a4. So, um, I, I, I mean, I know Gary, Gary definitely has spoken about it, um, but I, he definitely said something about, like, he, he, he did calculate a good chunk of it, but he definitely said that there was some intuition for sure um, involved. And th this, this is why I rank this game so highly, because what happens is you basically give up a lot of material and it's not a situation where there are obvious moves. Um, like you kind of still have to find the best moves and not investments, but the perfect moves. Cause otherwise you're just gonna lose, um, you're gonna lose the game. Yeah, Antonio definitely did analysis of this. So B4, King A4, and again, look at this King. It's on the very edge of the board. So all black really needs is if you can get Queen takes D5 and bring your Queen down the board, black would be, uh, black would be winning. So now Gary goes Queen C3. And again, look at this evaluation bar, you guys. This shows how it went from minus two, and now it says zeros. Um, I, I don't know the time again. I'm sure I'm sure Gary probably has spoken about this game at length, um, so there's probably a way you can find it. But again, none of these moves are obvious. Like after queen d5, if you look at this position, find it, finding a win here, very, very difficult. Because again, if you go king b2 to try to create this classic checkmate with the three pawns, black can go queen to d4, and your queen, you lose your queen. And once you lose the queens, um, th this this king is actually very safe now on the edge of the board. Because the only way to make a checkmate is on a light square. You don't have a knight, so you can't jump to this square, which would be a check. If you go here, I just go back. So you can't checkmate here. You don't have a knight to get to this square. Your bishop getting to b3, you need like all day. You need like one, two. Of course, you can't go here because I capture. And if you try bishop f1, I can even just play like... I don't know, rookie eight for that matter. And again, it's like, it's so slow. You can never get the bishop over to b3 and make a checkmate. So because of that, um, it, it, at this point, a lot of it is just is just intuition. So Gary plays rook a7. Um, 
idea of course is to create a checkmate on a6 um and no you rook f7 is not a logical move because the thing is you don't have time here you're you're down um you're down a rook and a knight at this point already so you don't really have time to play like that you, you you can't dawdle around you have to go for a checkmate now queen c1 is also queen c7 is also a move but after queen d1 king b2 queen d4 king b1 black will make a repetition and it's a draw before you can create the checkmate on a5 with the pawns um so gary goes uh goes rook a7 here vessel and plays bishop to b7 he goes rook takes b7 of course in this position you cannot take the rooks if you take i go queen to b3 classic checkmate as i pointed out um and now after queen to c4 which is an idea to try to trade the queens which i don't know if this is the best move um maybe maybe black can play rook h to e8 here and let's see maybe although i i see the bar is going up again i have a feeling this is winning for white somehow but maybe not rook b6 rook a8 and yeah i mean the the bar is actually not saying white is winning here it looks like there's a crazy line here with rook c6 idea to go rook c5 so the queen can't stay on this diagonal because of course the bishop holds like let's say black goes here rook c5 um the queen cannot stay on this diagonal because the rook holds the square it's attacking the queen you can't go back this way and after queen d1 king b2 now i get my checkmate on b3 again so as you see it's, it's very complicated apparently I guess the computer is saying you can go rook e2, rook to c5, queen d1, king b2, and now to stop the mate, you can sack. And after takes, queen c2, rook c2, a5. This is apparently a draw here because black's gonna be able to open up the king side, or the queen side, I mean, and his king is gonna be completely safe here. So, again, very, very messy, very wild, very hard to find for humans, at least. Computers, of course, just laugh at us and they just play rookie eight like nobody's business, but for humans, very illogical. So, Veselin plays queen to c4 here. Very logical move, by the way. Um, trying to remove the queen from this diagonal. Also, the queen is very close um, to the qu queen side now. And after queen f6, there's king a3. And now, when you look at this, it's amazing because this king is so far down the board. But it's also threatening to create a checkmate. If it's black's move, let's just say you go rook a7 after rook d1. Oops, spaghettio. This is just checkmate. Your king is stuck, and you just lose the game on the spot. Um, so this king is potentially very weak or very strong. Big Kamu donated five dollars. Thank you for all the memories this year, Hikaru. Thank you, Big Kamu. Thank you for the five dollars. So Gary goes queen a6. Veselin plays king b4, and now Gary finds this unbelievable tactic: this pawn to c3. And you'll see, even for the computer, right off. Okay, now now that it's seen, I think it spots it, but it takes a second for it to spot that the C3 line is winning by fours. Um, and again, very very hard. Like in this position, Gary had to, I think, calculate this entire line with with uh, Queen A6, King here, and C3. And so now Black takes. Of course, if Black goes King C5, you just go um, Rook C7, and you win the Queen. Um, and the computer changes its mind every second. Well, I think this is why when I talk about this game, it really is like, it is a great game because like a lot of what is played, Gary's trying to do the pure calculations, but he had to have a feel, like a general sense that there was something there. He This wasn't all just pure calculation. Um, and so the way that Gary found all these moves is just incredible. He plays queen a1, a very nice move, king to d2. If black goes king to b4 here, uh, you just wind the king back up the board. You go queen check. If king c5, the same thing, rook c7 to win the win the queen. If black goes king a4, rook a7 is checkmate. It's the ladder. The king can't come back, and the rook uh, covers the squares. And if you go king a5, white goes queen to a3. You go queen to a4, and now white goes rook a7, and it's the same thing where you lose your queen on a4. Uh, someone asked why can't black take with a queen if you play queen takes c3 here you get checkmate there's queen b5 rook holds the queen king to a3 and now rook a7 queen a5 rook takes a5 again classic uh ladder checkmate king is checkmate on a3 so that is why uh vessel plays king c3 queen a1 is played by gary king d2 trying to keep the king bring the king i guess down here where maybe you can shield the king with some rooks potentially from all the checks uh queen to b2 king to d1 not king to e1 by the way because after king to e1 white goes rook to e7 check king to d1 and now there's an unbelievable beautiful move bishop to f1 and this is unbelievable because if black let's say moves the queen back to c5 you go queen to e2 checkmate 
And if you go queen takes f1, I have queen to c2. Look at this rook. It holds all the critical squares, and the queen is protected by the king, and your king is just toast. Um, so it's, it's unbelievably beautiful. So king to d1 is played instead of king to e1. And it's the same thing. Gary, again, showing unbelievable understanding, plays bishop to f1 here. So it's the same thing, but same theme, but with the rook on b7 and not e7. And again, this is what I'm saying with the game. Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, yeah, how did Gary find this? I mean, this is why Gary was, was the greatest player of all time. Um, because again, all this stuff is like, it has to be perfect, perfectly timed, perfectly planned. And, um, and the way Gary sees bishop f1 here is incredible. Gary in his prime was unbelievable, yeah. Um, the stockfish Gary, yeah. So, so, and now Veselin plays rook d2, which is a very, very tricky move. If it was Magnus, could he find it? I think Magnus could find these individual moves like bishop f1. Would Magnus have found this whole line with rook d4 and rook e7? I don't think so. I actually don't think so. Um, because M Magnus' style is a little bit different than Gary's. So I, I don't think Magnus would have found this actually in the same way. I, I don't think so. Um, it's not the way that he, he plays attacking chess. No, it's not shots fired. I, I think it's just Gary was just that amazing in tactical positions. Just unbelievable. Um, so Veselin plays rook d2, which looks like a very tricky move. Because if you take the rook, I take your queen, you take, and I take. And now black's just up one pawn in an end game. Um, and, and so you can't, you, you can't take the rook. If you take the queen, we reach the same thing. Black is still just up one pawn. And if you go queen takes h8, taking the rook in the corner... Black just goes queen a2, and good night, your king is checkmated. Which is why, again, in this position, Gary found the beautiful move, the brilliant move, rook to d7. Yet another unbelievably uh, strong move, the only completely winning move here. And the point is now you can't take the queen because your rook is pinned, your king would be in check. You, you can't really take the bishop because then I take and it's just checkmate with the rook supporting the queen. And um, there's actually no square to move the queen to here. Like, you'd love to go to one of these two or this square to protect protect your rook. But the only way you can protect the rook is from one of these three squares, and the pawn holds that, and the white queen holds the other two squares. And um, and so here, Veselin plays rook takes rook, Gary plays bishop takes queen, and you see black can't recapture the bishop because now you lose the rook in the corner. So he plays bc4, queen takes h8, Veselin plays rook to d3, and the rest of the game isn't really, doesn't, there isn't much really that needs to be explained. Um, but Gary goes queen a8, support the pawn on f3, c3, queen a4, king e1, f4, f5, king c1, rook d2, queen a7. And here, um, here Veselin resigned in view of the fact that he's going to lose these kingside pawns. His pawn really isn't going anywhere. The king can't do anything to support the pawn, and this is just, uh, this is just game over. And if black plays rook takes h2, there's queen to g1 check, collecting the rook. Whoops. Collecting the rook on h2 here. Um, so in this position, it's just game over. Um, so that's why here, uh, Veselin resigned. And just amazing, amazing game by Gary. All these moves that were found were incredible. So so as I was saying, though, it's really, it's really amazing to see the way Gary played that game. He found a lot of amazing moves. Only moves to win. Only, only moves to win. Um, and that's why that game ranks so highly because the the way that it was um, the way that the uh, the way that Gary played that there was no there were no guarantees it was down material and he had to gamble um, and he had to trust his intuition.